Good morning. Welcome, everybody. How's it going this morning? Smatterings of goods. The rest of you, who knows? Greg's not really sure. That's probably where, that's where I'm at, probably more than anything else. Yeah, it's morning, which is never my best time of day. So, welcome to our online folks. Also, glad to have you with us. I see you are chatting online here, and so I continue to watch that, and we'll greet you in just a moment by name. Um, just a few announcements before we get there. Um, church play day was yesterday. We had a really good morning with our kids. We talked about um, creation, and we talked about God being the God that continues to do creation type stuff through science and all kinds of other ways. We played with like these clay conductor light things. They were really cool. And we played with Legos, which we realized we need to play with every single time we do church play day because the Legos were a hit. Like Cecilia was even excited about it by the time it was all done, right? That was a fun day yesterday. So that was good. Um, just good to share what's going on in our parish. Um, completely unrelated to Church Play Day yesterday, but part of creation is we have a special visitor in the sanctuary this morning. Um, it has been flying up and down the top of the sanctuary roof here. It is a bird, and I can tell by Michelle's look in her face that she's thinking about leaving right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it has not bitten anybody yet. It seems to be just quite content to be on the roof of the sanctuary. But I just want to give you all a heads up that if it were to flutter or you hear something near the roof line or if it were to fly down the center of the church, just don't be alarmed. We're going to keep doing our thing, and we are really worshiping with creation this morning. Um, and if it really starts coming down low, Mike Beachak is going to be the one to run around the church and chase it. He's, we've already talked with him. Um, so just heads up about the bird. Um, yeah, that's a weird one. You online people don't get the full experience with the bird, unless Joe does some crazy camera work and tries to capture it, but probably not. Doubtful. All right, good morning to Quayshawn. I see you online this morning. Glad to have you with us. Barbara Omi, glad to have you with us too. The Weavers, good morning to you. Teresa from Faith, awesome to have you. Oh, Joyce Emesis, hi. Hi to you, Emma. I'm going to do a good kid story here in just a little bit. You're going to love it. Um, anyone else online, you're more than welcome to share. Uh, Diane, I see you online too. You're welcome to share greetings and any other things you want to share. You're welcome to share prayer requests. We'll include those in the prayers intercession a little later. Anyone in the sanctuary here, you can do the same thing. Um, text me any prayer requests you have. I'll include those in the prayers intercession. Last thing, and this might be the most important thing for today, we've got some special visitors here that are not the bird. Um, they're people visitors. Um, that <laughs> Back to the people visitors, though. Um, so I think many of you know that uh, when I was at Pitt, I went to the campus ministry there, and it was a really, really important place for me in my faith life. Um, I was actually at a place where I had sort of like not gone to church for like a year and a half and was sort of frustrated with other church people. Um, not necessarily God, and it's funny, I still wanted to be a pastor in the midst of all that. I just quit going to church for a little bit. And when I showed up at the Lutheran campus ministry, um, I just it was such a great space. It, it reinvigorated my calling for ministry. Um, I just, I loved it, and the pastor that was there, and the community that was there. Um, and so this morning, we've got representatives from the campus ministry. There it is. There's... All right, so let's get it all out of our system right now. There's the bird. Look, everybody point. Uh, someone give Michelle a hug, because she's going to have a panic attack. It's just a little bird. All right, have we got all the bird stuff out of our, out of our system? No. <laughs> Thank, appreciate your honesty. And just... We'll take a moment for Joe to capture the bird on the camera. All right, that's the bird. It's probably going to happen a number of times this morning. And so we're just going to let the bird and Mike chasing it go. Um, all right, back to campus ministry. Important place this morning. Uh, Pastor Brian Bennett from the campus ministry is here to preach to us, uh, bring the word in that, in that regard, which I'm excited about. Um, pastor Brian was not the pastor that was there when I went uh, to the campus ministry, but he's an awesome friend, and I'm super glad that he's here this morning to preach. Um, and also from the campus ministry is uh, Anna, Lynn, and Sarah. Um, thank you for being here. And they're going to come up here in just like a second to give a quick temple talk. And they both went to Pitt, which is, so the campus ministry serves Pitt, Carnegie Mellon, Chatham, and Carlo, but Pitt's the best. Right, Ben? Yes. <laughs> ben, ben is an accompanist for Carnegie Mellon, which is why I give him a hard time there. But he knows Pitt's the best. All right, hail to Pitt. Guys, come on up here and like, share a little bit about campus ministry. Good morning. 
always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Annalyn Fryer, and I am a sophomore at Pitt studying nursing and Hispanic language and culture. As a college student, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to participate in campus ministry because of how busy my schedule was, but Psalm hosts weekly worship on both Sundays and Thursdays, understanding the busyness of students. I joined Psalm last year, and even though I haven't been there long, it is a core part of my life on campus. On top of worship on Thursday, that's when we have our midweek meal, where students from CMU, Pitt, and Chatham join for fellowship while enjoying a nicely cooked meal by Pastor Brian, who always makes sure that there is a vegetable on the table. When we aren't having meals or worship, our university building is always free for students to use. These gatherings allow us to have a safe space to talk about our lives and how our faith is helping us through our journey. Hello. My name is Sarah, and I'm a recent graduate of Pitt. Hail to Pitt. Hail Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> it's been just over four years exactly, like the other day, since I first joined the Lutheran Campus Ministry, uh, and this community has turned into one of my strongest bonds in that time. Recently, I have been dealing with some difficult family issues. Tensions and strained relationships that have been simmering for years have finally come to a head, and I've lost contact with a couple of my family members. I've been dealing with this for years, but the situation had gotten to me in a way that hadn't in the past, and I didn't know what to do, but I felt called to go to our university building. My friend Ben, who I didn't know was there, saw that I was upset, and he allowed me to share what I had to say. He not only listened to my feelings and what I said, but validated me and made me feel heard. I don't feel like I would have been as comfortable talking to anyone else as I did to my friend in Psalm. When we're not being there for each other, we're out serving others in the community. One of our biggest community engagements is the food bank at Zion Lutheran Church in Penn Hills, where every month we distribute food to those in need, regardless of who they are or where they come from. Though I've only been in Psalm for a year, I know I have a safe community to be a part of, and I can't wait to see how our service and fellowship grows throughout the years. Not long after I became a regular, a friend of mine from another club came to join me. At first, they were very hesitant and very shy, finding it hard to get even to the refrigerator for a second with more food. I was also still very shy, which I tend to be in uncomfortable situations, so I appreciate you all being a very, very welcoming group. Um, but I had been welcomed for long enough that I was able to amass enough confidence to somehow get both me and my friend uh, to get some more food. The campus ministry is an easy place to learn courage, which I often have to do. And soon both me and my friend were so at ease uh, in the place that somehow both of us graduated having been student leaders. I know there was a length of time between point A and point B, uh, but looking back, the transformation was radical, and I'm really proud of us both. Uh, I thank the students who came before us for modeling the love and kindness of Christ at the table, and I pray that we have been able to show those who came after us the same. Uh, this kindness is infectious, and it has helped me be a stronger person and reach out to others who may need it. A couple years ago, another friend of mine was in great distress and needed some food. Luckily, it was a Thursday, so I knew where to get some. Uh, she wasn't able to join us in person for dinner, but that wasn't a problem since I was able to fill a to-go box full of the food that we had prepared and deliver it to her. Love and food, it's the same thing, uh, aren't meant to be kept within a small group of people. Uh, and living in this Christian fellowship has made me all the more eager and capable of reaching out to those in need around us. This idea is also reflected in our worship services, which to my knowledge are the only ones on campus which regularly offer the Eucharist and which are open to all. This, these two ideas together are very important to me personally, and so I am very proud to be able to represent this group. To help us with our outreach and ministry, <clears throat> we are asking for your financial support. Whether that be a special offering or a line item in your budget, Psalm is one of, if not the only ministry on campus that asks kids to come as they are, no matter where they are with their education or life. Psalm met me where I was, and now I've already built strong bonds. You can donate at our website, psalm.online, or talk to Pastor Brian, who's in the back, after worship. We thank you no matter what kind of donation you are able to provide, and we appre appreciate your partnership. Thank you.
any offerings you all give this morning. Uh, if you have anything, you can just put it in the offering plate, and we'll, it'll go to the right location. And those in the live stream, we're going to put the link there in just a moment. Ben, can you gather us for worship? As you are able, I invite you to rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness, and so we give thanks for the gift of baptism. 
We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and you placed us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we didn't know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. And at the cross, you washed us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy all who thirst and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. of joy that cannot die. Alleluia is the anthem ever dear to choirs on high. In the house of God abiding, thus they sing The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Distance. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Summon us into your light and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And I'm going to do a bit of a kid's moment right now, so if there are any, uh, any kids that want to come forward... I'm not going to put an age designation on kid. You can. Um, I'm going to sit right here, I think. Um, you can come up here and sit near me if you'd like to see extra well. And, of course, it'll be on the screen there if you are sitting farther back. Or for people who are home, they can watch on the screen too, right? We're right here. So you are extra close today. And what, what are we reading from? 400. Ooh, you know what, though? I forgot to change the number. We did 408 last week. So we're on, I know, man. And other way. Four hundred and ten. That's the one we're actually on. I forgot to change the number over there. And we're and we're reading from what book? Our Spark Story Bible, right? Which is awesome. We've been reading all the way through it. Look at this. I don't know if you've noticed. Look how many pages we've read through. We've read through all these stories and all these pages, right? This is a great Bible. Did you bring your cat today? Okay, so the cat needs to be a good listener and just a few meows, but not a lot of meows, all right? So we're going to read from today about a wedding. Have you ever been to a wedding? Well, yes. I was really there. You were readers, so you know all about weddings. Well, this is a story from the Bible about Jesus going to a wedding with his mom. Um, so here's the story. It's called The Wedding at Cana. Now, isn't it hard to see if you're sitting behind me? That's okay. I'll show you anyway. You know what? We're going to read it like this, and I'll show everybody else. All right. The Wedding at Cana. Jesus was at a wedding in the town of Cana. Jesus' family and the disciples were there, and it was a grand day for a wedding. The sun was shining, and everyone was singing and dancing. It was quite a party with good food and good wine. Yeah. Good music. Mm, the guests said to each other, this is probably the best party we've ever been to. Then the wine ran out. <gasps> Even though the servers shook every wine jar, there was none left. Now Jesus' mother, Mary, heard the servers tell the person in charge of the party. All the stone jars are empty, and the wine is gone. How can this be? They asked. The party isn't over yet. And look at the picture. They're all like, they're panicked, aren't they? See them? Look at this guy. Right, look at like, just that one drop coming out. And the guy, look, there's more to come right in his face, huh? All right, we'll see what happens. You're right, yeah. All right, let's see what happens. Mary, that's Jesus' mom, slipped away to find Jesus. Jesus, Mary said, they have run out of wine. Can't you do something? What could I do? Jesus asked Mary. But Mary knew. Mary knew Jesus could do something. And so Mary told the servers, do whatever my son Jesus tells you to do. I think he can help you. So Jesus looked around. Over by the wall, he saw six large stone jars sitting near the table. And so Jesus walked over to the servers and said, Fill these jars with cold water. The servers hurried to the water pool. Slosh, slosh, slosh. They filled the jars with water. And when the jars were full of water up to the very brim, the servers told Jesus, We've done what you asked. The jars are full to the brim with cold water. And this looks like the picture. See those big jars? Do you know how big the jars were? They held like 150 gallons of water total, like 30 gallons each. That's a lot of water, huh? 150 gallons? I know. Good, Jesus said. Now, 
Put some into a cup and give it to the person in charge of the party. Slosh, slosh, slosh. The servers filled a cup from the stone jar and took it to the person in charge. And when he tasted it, he smiled. It was a miracle. The water had turned to wine. Yes. And this wine was even better than the wine they were serving before. Now the man in charge took a cup of wine to the groom and gave it to him. My friend, taste this. You have kept the best wine until now. Most people serve the best wine first, but you have saved the best for last. The servers hurried to give everyone the new wine, and the music played, and everyone sang and danced. Exactly, yes. This was Jesus' first miracle, and when his disciples learned of it, they believed that he was God's son even more than they had before. And look at this picture. It looks like everyone is super excited about the wine. So what we're going to do right now is for the three of us, we're just going to drink a bunch of wine. No, we're not going to do that. That's a, I hate wine. You hate wine? All right, so we're not going to drink wine then. But that's an amazing story. Can you imagine... Can you imagine the water right there in our baptismal font just changing into wine? Wouldn't that be crazy? And so one of my favorite things to think about with this story is, did you notice it said, which was this Jesus' first miracle, or was it like his 13th, or was it his last? Do you remember what it said in the story? It was his first, exactly, Alfie. It was his first. And I think it's really cool that his first miracle isn't like raising someone from the dead or healing somebody or something that feels really serious. He was at a party, a big, huge, awesome party, and they had a little problem with not enough wine, and they could have easily been okay if they used water, right? But Jesus likes a good party, I think, and he turned a whole bunch of water into wine so that people could be even more happy and celebrate. Isn't that a cool thing? Like, God likes parties and likes to celebrate, right? Should we celebrate right now and have a party? I'm all about that. Well, our party is a little different. It's going to be a church party, and we're going to have communion with wine in just a little bit. How about that? Nope, that's not how it works. We had the water, but then it got turned to wine. Haha, <laughs> think about that one. All right, thank you, too, for coming up here. That was a fun story. Nope, time for you to go back to your seat now. No more arguing about water and wine. first reading is from Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, the Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the later time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those people who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people will exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of, the, of their oppressor, you have broken as, as on the day of Midian. We will now read Psalm 27 responsibly. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord, one thing I seek, that may I dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to see God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Even now, my head is lifted up above my enemies. Surround me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary. Sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. 
Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God, of my salvation. The second reading is from Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is the each is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did not baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, Let me say, I am very thankful that I can be here today. I have a couple students who shared wonderful stories of their experience at the campus ministry. Uh, I will say, uh, some might question... They have talked about Psalm. You might have heard Lutheran University Center or Lutheran Campus Ministry in Greater Pittsburgh, and they talk about Psalm. The way we reach out to students is Psalm because it's Pittsburgh students active in Lutheran ministry. Um, I'll put that in notes. Make that, you know, that's good. Yeah. Um, it is a little, it, it can get a little confusing, but it is a way for us to make it clear that all are welcome. Uh, when we start with Lutheran, it, some folks go, oh, I'm not Lutheran, I don't belong. If we start with Pittsburgh students, they're like, oh, I'm a Pittsburgh student, I can join. That's how it works. Um, they pay attention very closely. And I want to thank Pastor Mike for having me here. He was, it's his fault that I'm the campus pastor. Um, he, was on the call, he was on the board at the time I was called, so it's all his fault. But he's been a wonderful supporter, and uh, thank you. Also, uh, House of Prayer uh, has been a good supporter of the campus ministry, so happy to be here today. 
uh, and sort of tell you more about it. So, Well, they say a picture paints a thousand words. And if that's the case, Instagram, that social media platform, has painted billions upon billions of words. You know, it's been around for more than a decade now. Uh, or maybe it's easy to say it's only been around for a decade because it feels like it's been with us forever. Um, even me, who grew up without the uh, smartphones and all, go, yeah, it's always been here. It's great. It's a, good, it's a big thing. But, but for all that time, it has shared the mundane, the artistic, the stylistic, the bizarre. Nowadays, uh, we don't see as many pictures. We see a lot more short videos. They're reels as they try to keep up with TikTok. We see those and throughout that platform. It's a means to provide snapshots of life. We get snippets of people's lives and others follow along. I, I myself am no exception. I've shared videos and photos uh, of where I have been and what I'm doing. And recently, I don't mean to brag, but I've gotten hundreds of likes and thousands of views for the little reels I've made of my, our bearded dragon, Yoshi. Influ Pastor influencer, you can call me. We also, though, we use social media in the campus ministry. Um, I recently gave uh, the task of managing our Instagram over to Anna Lynn um, because it makes my life easier and because also I'm old and I don't, I don't do social media all that well, really. I mean, Yoshi pictures aside. But Anna Lynn just posts a few pictures every week. Um, just as we're doing things, letting people know what it's like. So people who are interested in our ministry can see what they expect if they drop in. Sharing pics can be fun and informative, but we know there are limits. We know that it can get rough for people who try to do this regularly as a living. To maintain the levels of influence that Instagram can provide, People have to dedicate more and more time to their videos. They plan elaborate shoots at expensive trips. Um, many of the news services picked up the story uh, in 2021 of Gabby Petito. Uh, this woman, she and her fiance lived the van life, you know, renovate a van and then travel around the, the country and take pictures and reels and share and get a lot of stuff. And we, they find her body in a park and then her fiance has disappeared and is on the run, and we see there's a dark side to this. We know that marriages have broken down due to the work to provide an image of a perfect life. Mental health takes a toll. We know even if picture paints a thousand words. It can't give everything. We don't see everything in the background. But snapshots are like that. Summaries of an experience that leave out many details. Just the essential thing is what we see. We think we know people through their feed, but all too often, much is left unsaid and unwritten. And I, I couldn't help but feel we have the same thing in the gospel text today. That it's a snapshot. A snapshot of the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. We get a summary of how it begins what Jesus preaches, and what this ministry looks like. We know 
the text tells us. He begins when John the baptizer is arrested following Jesus' baptism and temptation in the wilderness. Jesus' movement from Nazareth to Galilee makes the gospel writer recall Isaiah's words, seeing something familiar in Jesus' life that connects with God's activity in the past. A bit, a bit. We get Jesus, Jesus is preaching in a nutshell. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Much like John, Jesus comes bearing a message, urging us to turn away from the brokenness of the world and turning to the ways that God is being active, bringing wholeness and peace and justice and love to all. We get a picture of the ministry summarized at the end. Jesus goes about Israel preaching and teaching and healing. You don't get details. Just a snapshot. But then we also get an important piece. We get a snapshot as Jesus calls people into relationship with him. He calls disciples, Andrew, Simon, James, John, fishermen, all of them. Jesus shows up, begins preaching, and begins forming a community. You know, in the passage, Jesus walks up, says, follow me, and they immediately follow him. Much has been made of this encounter. Numerous preachers go on and on about what this says about the identity of Jesus or the motivation of the disciples or the level of commitment or faith that they have. Follow me and I will make you fish for people. That's what we're told Jesus says. So it's a challenge with pictures painting a thousand words. It can be complicated because sometimes we bring our own canvases that already have our own words on it. It's full of stuff and it affects how we read those words. Follow me and I'll make you fish for people. It's all too easy for us to hear our own words describe the picture. And I think the same is here. The gospel writer provides a snapshot for us. But the point isn't why the disciples got up and followed Jesus. We don't have to know if Jesus knew the disciples beforehand. We don't have to know if Jesus was just incredibly charismatic thanks to his divine nature. It's not really the point in the snapshot. Just like repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, isn't all that we hear about Jesus' teaching and preaching? And in Matthew, we hear so much. We get five long sermons that Jesus gives. Well, in the same way, finding out about the disciples, we get a lot more along the way as we continue diving into this story. So much behind the scenes, just like with Instagram posts. There's so much more to be discovered. The snapshot brings us in, catches our attention, entices us. And we should look not at why they said yes, But who says yes? The point of the snapshot is likely to describe who it is exactly that Jesus calls. Jesus doesn't call the expected type of disciple. Rabbis usually call the best students of Torah, the ones who memorize all of the passages and who are well informed of the rabbinic traditions. But not Jesus. Jesus calls fishermen, laborers. And again, we will see 
as time goes on, that these ones who Jesus calls totally don't get Jesus. Until they do, bright moments of clarity. And then they don't. And then they do, and then they don't. Jesus isn't like Isaiah. Isaiah roams the halls of power in Jerusalem in his day. Jesus was in the everyday. Jesus, let's us see everyday people responding to God's activity. It's not really any different for us. We might remember the time we decided to follow Jesus. We don't exactly remember it. It was just the process of transformation for us. Or maybe it was just something we've always known in our lives. Nonetheless, we know that just as Jesus called those fishermen, Jesus has called us. Jesus has said, follow me in many and various ways to each of us. The same one who called those fishermen approached us and invited us into the community of followers. And even if we can pinpoint a specific moment, our baptism, a moment of divine clarity, a conversion, that moment itself remains a snapshot of so much more that's going on. People who have worked in our lives to bring us to that moment, And more importantly, the God who is constantly at work influencing and wooing us, even when we get it wrong. God continually calls us to repentance and action at the same time. We are fond of leaning into Luther's slogan, remember your baptism. Because that itself is a snapshot in so many ways of God's activity in our lives Ways that we cannot tell always until afterwards. Ways that the community builds itself through grace-filled conversation with one another. The ways that Jesus continually continually gives of himself in water and bread and wine to forgive and heal and to make whole. The snapshot is a window into a life that requires involvement because thousands of words will never be enough. Jesus, this call of Jesus, is millions of lives lived out because the kingdom of heaven has come near in his life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You may sit or kneel in the more comfortable stance as we pray. Make your church one in purpose, proclaiming the message of the cross. Help us to work together across differences, energize and cement to our partnerships including the World Council of Churches and Lutheran World Federation. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We rejoice at the bounty of your creation. Fill the land and sea with your abundance. Bless harvests in the southern hemisphere and follow fields in the northern. Equip farmers to, to till and keep the earth sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In Christ, your reign comes near and calls all to repentance. Break the rod of the oppressor in every nation. Dispel the shadow of death in places of war and persecution. Grant us leaders who lift the yokes that burden those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Be a stronghold for those in trouble and a rock for all who are afraid. Rouse communities to care for neighbors who need shelter, are facing maltreatment, or are isolated and lonely. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain the ministries of this congregation and all churches in this community. Nurture each congregation's unique witness to your presence. Foster mutual respect. Inspire our cooperation and loving loving our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the shape of our prayers is one of starting very broadly with all of creation and all that you offer us, narrowing down to the very closeness of our community and our individual prayer requests. These are the requests that our community offers up this morning. We pray with Amy as she asks for continued prayers for her grandmother. We pray with Diane as she prays for Amy, Ginger, and Michelle. We pray Quay Sean's prayers as he prays for Rhonda and himself. Prayers of peace and joy. And we pray with Pat. He prays for Nikki, Marge, Bobby, Patty, Mary Ann, and our loving world. We hold up folks from our church community this week. We hold up in prayer Jan Zobrak, who's in the hospital and we hold up the Hammond family and the loss that they've experienced this week. Lord God, often our prayers are such that we do all the talking and sharing and pouring out of our hearts to you and then move on. We don't practice in our praying always the art of listening. And so right now in our worship, we model just for a moment a little bit of listening. We listen for the snapshots of our lives, the, the moments where you are at work, we slow down now to notice them. We pause.
praise you for the faithful who have gone ahead of us, both famous and unknown. Help us to leave our nets and follow, and bring us with them to the fullness of your promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. I like that Pastor Brian used the word snapshot in the sermon and as a way of imagining our faith lives in many ways. And the scriptures are full of snapshot moments all through the narrative that we find there, um, Old Testament, New Testament. In many ways, this moment, as we gather around the table of communion again, is another snapshot moment. Um, and it reminds us of the meal 2,000 years ago and what happened in that snapshot of a moment. People who came from all over the area, traveled by difficult means, gathering to participate in an ancient tradition, one that they would have known from the day they were born and been steeped in. And so too, we gather today. This snapshot is a little bit different than that one. And in this snapshot, it's not just one that we look at, but one that we dive into, one that we experience. It's one that we smell. It's one that we taste. It's a snapshot, though, that ultimately is about God's grace and love for us. At this table, the snapshot re reminds us that everyone is welcome and that everyone is loved. Every hand that gets laid out before Jesus is filled with bread and wine, and so it is today as we gather around this table. As we gather around this table, we remember that night 2,000 years ago in which Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. When you gather, do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for everyone, for the forgiveness of sin. When you gather, do this and remember me. of the snapshot of this moment as it has been in the church for many generations is to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And so we, together, with a great degree of slowness and patience, say these ancient words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but 
deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, congregation. The way that we'll do communion is by coming up the center aisle, making two rows. I'll hand out bread to you, and then you'll go to either your left or right, where there'll be cups you can pick up, and then have them filled with wine, and then put them in an empty tray, even further to your left or right, and then return via the outside aisles to your seats. This is a meal that is open and welcome for everyone. It is literally called the Eucharist, the good gift. It is a gift for all people. Open hands will get filled with bread and wine. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Come, the feast is ready. and see the goodness of the Lord taste and see the goodness of the Lord oh taste and see
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace and your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
good words for that familiar tune, aren't they? Friends, hear these words of blessing for you. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you all. We go sharing that peace with each other and the world. Thank you.